going to unpack a picture from uh, England. This print was bought from England. We have two of them. There's only two. We can't get any more. Uh, you, you, there will be others in England for sale, but these came from the printer who'd had them in storage since they were printed. And the condition is, is very good. The colour is crisp, very crisp. Freshly, they're like they were printed yesterday, but they were printed in 1974. And they're titled Linear Development in One Movement. Linear Development in One Movement, 1974. And they're Victor Passmore. Okay. Let's have a look. I've seen them uh, not framed, um, but they've been framed in Malta. And we're going to have a look. Let's have a look at it. <clears throat> the print is hovering, hovering. The picture frame has got two pieces of glass at the front, two pieces of glass. And the print is sandwiched between two pieces of glass at the front. And there is a gap behind it of an inch. So you get the really interesting shadow and effect. And the colour of the frame goes, just happens to go really well with it. It's a printer's proof, signed in pencil. That's why the printer had it, he would have kept it. Bit to pass on 1975. The coloured bit will be 15 inches, which is 38 centimetres. wrong, 40 centimetres. Which is 15 and three quarters. The ink, when they print them, when they printed them, they had hot ink because the machine was an artisan machine, which was hand, hand cranked. And if the ink is cold, it's too stiff, it jams the machine up. So it's printed with hot ink. They add grit into the ink so that it has this lovely sort of stone-like texture. And Victor Passmore here has signed has gone into the printer's workshop and he's signed the etching plate on the left VP and the printer's made it and then it's been turned around so his VP is in reverse there so he has come back and signed the margin as well in pencil VP 75. This torn edge is what you want to see it's handmade paper the um, original run of limited editions, I'm, I don't know how many, I can't remember how many there were, there might have been 100, there might have been 60, I don't know. And on top of the numbered limited edition ones, there would have been artist proofs, proofs and printer's proofs. I think he would have had a dozen, possibly more, printer's proofs, and I think Passmore would have, himself would have had a dozen, perhaps, artist proofs. I think to frame these like that is stupid. Uh, in, in Malta in the Musa, where they have lots of them like that, uh, they've used the conventional prevailing style of framing, but it gives such a, such a restricted um, view of how these prints are made that it's such a shame. The, the, reason, the reason a print has a margin is so the printer can handle the print because the ink is wet, 
the ink is wet and the printer moves it, and it's all wet, there will be fingerprints all over it. So the, re the reason we have a margin is because, it's not because of how, how people want to see it, we have a margin so the printers can make the damn things. And the printer can handle them, move them, inspect them, re-offer them, and um, this is the sort of paper they used, handmade paper. And nowadays, of course, all the prints you see, most of the prints you see are G-clay prints, meaning inkjet prints, and they can print up to the edge. And often the G-clay prints use a very shiny paper, so they don't use as much ink, so it dries quickly. And of course, it's, it's, it's done by machine, done by computer, inkjet prints. So when you see a parsimal print like this, you have the textured paper, the rough edge, you have the impression mark. So if I was to run my hand along it, it would go along, in, goes down a millimetre or two, along, up and across. So it's 3D and you, you get that effect with it. And all the people who, who are learning in Malta about parsimal prints don't ever get to see this. Such a shame. Okay, thank you.